Hello, with me today I have Ashley Kelty, Director, an oil and gas research analyst at Pamir Gordon. Hi, Ashley. Hi, how are you? Very well. Look, just a bit of background um, to begin with. The price of oil fell from over $120 a barrel in June uh, last year to just uh, around $65 in March this year. Could you please explain to viewers what was behind both the surge and subsequent slump in price? Well, the surge last year was primarily on the, on the back of the, the conflict in Ukraine. Um, prices had been rising um, at the start of the year due to um, general sort of shortages of supply and OPEC failing to, to meet quotas. However, the sort of removal of Russia from the, the markets through sanctions, which Russia is essentially the, the world's second biggest producer, was going to cause huge shockwaves. I think a lot of people didn't understand um, what the impact would be in terms of um, removing that and the impact on, on physical supply in, in the short term. So th there was um, a lot of moves to try and buy oil uh, forward and that pushed the price up. Um, however, it did seem to get watered down in the second half of the year when people realised the impact or lack of um, in terms of sanctions. I mean, an example would be that Boris Johnson was given a lot of stick for insisting that diesel was phased out over the course of 2022. However, what they didn't understand was that around 30 to 35% of all the UK's diesel came from Russia. So obviously they couldn't have phase that out overnight if they had the impact on logistics, freight, rural communities and the general public would have been absolutely de devastating and I don't think people would have been very happy at the huge spike in prices for diesel just to feel happier that they were punishing Russia for U Ukraine. So obviously the UK had to find alternative sources and that took time over the course of the year. I think it's also important to remember that there's the prevarication of the G7 and the EU about the imposition of sanctions, a price cap on, on Russian oil, and this allowed Russia time to divert supplies and um, for other people to, to source alternate uh, means of securing fuel. I think another factor um, that also caused the price rise was the, the fear of um, recession and the impact on China of their COVID zero policy, which ex well exacerbated the, the risk of a recession, saw prices fall down, particularly since um, China is sort of the world's biggest importer of, of fuel and obviously will be a big driver to the, uh, the global economy. I think the fears about a global recession uh, in the second half of last year did trigger a bit of a sell-off in commodities as the, there wasn't the expected rise in demand. There was over, physical oversupply from uh, the US Strategic Reserve as President Biden sort of moved ahead of the midterms to try and get prices at the pump down in the hope of winning over voters. And that was 180 million barrels that the, the market had not expected. It created the perception that there was more oversupply in the market, which did depress prices heading into this year. But the, the key was China taking time to, to reopen. The abandonment of its uh, zero COVID policy at the end of last year has certainly pushed prices up this year as demand is, is growing. I think we saw that with today's uh, GDP numbers for the first quarter. It was at 4.5%, which was much higher than people were forecasting. And that that's an encouraging sign. The rebound hasn't been as great as people have expected. It's been a bit choppy, I think, to be honest, but it is reopening and certainly the IEA expects that uh, China will account for most of the demand growth this year. There are also other factors which are impacting um, physical supply at the moment. There is the closure of the Iraq-Turkey export pipeline um, while following a sort of dispute over Kurdistan. And that removes about 450,000 barrels a day. And there's also the impact of Russia reducing its output. Um, while it said that it's targeting a reduction of 500,000 barrels a day, it hasn't managed to get there yet. 
but the markets are largely driven by sentiment at the moment. And I can think we can see why uh, prices have um, bounced back this year, certainly as there is a, a physical supply squeeze in the first uh, few months of this year. Yeah, well, I mean, we're, we're below $65 at one point, um, you know, just a month ago, around a month ago. Uh, and now we're, we're back well above um, $80 a barrel. Well, an element of the sharp bounce back has been the uh, cut, uh, surprise cut by OPEC at the end of March, where they've reduced it by 1.2 uh, million barrels a day. And that, coupled with the previously announced cuts, will remove over 2% of, of global supply. Now, this was uh, has certainly driven... Um, supply uh, down and obviously demand is rising with China beginning to reopen there is the, obviously a, a snapback for that and there is the sh sort of near-term physical squeeze particularly exacerbated by as I mentioned earlier Russian um, supply being cut and also the impact of the Iraq Turkey um, export line However, the sell-off in the early part of the year was largely sentiment-driven. It wasn't driven by fundamentals. They have remained strong throughout. The pace of demand growth has changed. It's been a bit slower than people expected, but everyone agrees that there will be demand growth. The sentiment was triggered by the collapse of Credit Suisse and Silicon Valley Bank, and that spooked wider markets, which then triggered a sort of risk off sentiment amongst investors, which pulls capital away from commodities. However, now that we don't appear to have a full scale banking crisis, people have become uh, more bullish about the markets and that has brought them back into commodities. Uh, fundamentals are still strong, as I said, and I think that uh, prices should rise um, heading into the second half of this year. Great. Ashley Kelty, Director and Oil and Gas Research Analyst at Pamela Gordon. Thanks very much for joining me today.